Today we will look at one more verse, John chapter 21, verse 24. And for those of you that have your Bibles, I want to encourage you to come there with me because you will see not only a continuation of the Gospel of John, but I think that you will see a portrait of biblical Christmas, a portrait of biblical Christianity that will inform you, I pray, shape you, inspire you, and then fill you with the truth and love that God will use to later draw others to himself. You see, again, the world around us does not need another Christmas flash mob. The world needs Christian, faithful missionaries. Those that will come and bring the truth and the love of the miracle at the foundation. The Messiah, who is the only one upon which our faith can and will rest. And then the mission that will forever guide our steps to the glory of God and through his grace. So I share this with you and tell you up front that all throughout the Gospel of John, we have seen this story being told of the miracle, the Messiah, and the mission. And and let me just give you one quick highlight of where you can see that in the miracle aspect of Jesus the Christ of Christmas. You see, right at the very beginning of John, in John 1.1, you see the miracle of the miracle maker, that God's word tells us that Jesus was there in the beginning, that he is God. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. We see the miracle of Jesus identified as the miracle maker. We see in John 3 the miracle of metamorphosis, for it's there that we are told that God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever Don't you love the whosoever clauses? That's a Christmas gift if there ever was one. But that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. That we will go from dead to alive. John 3, 3, that you must be born again. You mean I can literally be born again? That's the miracle of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the miracle gift of Christmas. We see not only that miracle metamorphosis, But we saw in John 4 the miracle multiplier as Jesus met the woman at the well, the woman that nobody else wanted to talk to, the woman that was the outcast, right? And Jesus said, watch what happens. I will multiply this miracle through the unlikely because it's not about your resume, it's about our relationship. And those in whom I touch and change will change the world because I'm in them. We went from seeing the miracle to seeing the Messiah. And we see this directly in the messianic provocation of John 6. You see, this is where Jesus comes and says, look, I understand you want church, you don't want Christ. You either follow me or you don't. And the scripture said that many of his disciples followed him no more. You see, Jesus wasn't about building the crowd, he was about building his church. He wasn't looking for consumers. He wanted Christians. And he said to them, you count the cost. And if you walk away, you walk away. But we will not compromise. There was a messianic provocation in John 6. We saw also a messianic demonstration in John 9 where Jesus healed the blind man. And the religious people got upset. And they called him in. And the demonstration was asked about and said, okay, blind man who now sees, I don't know that I buy that, but what's up with that? Right? He says, listen, I don't know your church lingo. I, I, don't, I don't talk the church talk. This I know. I was blind, now I see. That I can tell you about. The messianic demonstration is all throughout John's gospel that Jesus is God. He is the promised one who fulfilled it through his proclamations. He told them so through his demonstrations, the miracles and the signs over and over and over again, ultimately through his resurrection. But we saw the messianic demonstration there. We also saw that there's a messianic declaration that Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. You see, this messianic proclamation forces us to acknowledge that Jesus is either a liar, a lunatic, or the Lord. This Christ of the Bible is either the reason for Christmas or the whole thing is a hoax. 
And I want to bring you to that fork in the road. You know why? Because I'm not afraid of the hoax story. Because I know he's the Holy One. And that he is the reason for the season. That Christ is the Christ of Christmas. And without a Christ, there is no Christmas. We saw not only the Messiah, but we saw the mission We've been called to live missionally. And again, this is all throughout John. I only hit a couple of high spots, but we see a missional abiding in John 15 where Jesus made it clear, you can't do anything without me, right? I'm the vine, you're the branches. You disconnect from me, you're dead. And everything you do will be picked up, cast into the fire because it's useless. You say, wow, that's pretty intense. Well, when you're a king that goes to a cross, that there would be a celebration one day called Christmas. You have the right to be intense. When you're the miracle maker and the truth teller, you set the standards. And this is what he said, you must have a missional abiding. And abiding means obeying. This is the essence of Christmas. We saw not only a missional abiding, but we also saw the missional anatomy in John 17, where Jesus made it clear that there would be a oneness that this missional life would be a oneness as the family of God. He said, listen, every one of you that I've adopted, you're all in my family. You live like it, not just because it enhances your quality of life, but he said, listen, how you live and love one another will be my calling card to a lost and dying world. You see, there's a missional anatomy that is just as critical as any other truth in the Christian life, in the essence of Christmas. We're to come together, not because there's a big tree, but because of the truth teller that draws us together, that we love one another. We're not there to see who gets what present. We're there to bring glory to God together and so that a world will look and say, what are they doing? Say, oh, they're loving their God and they're loving each other. Get out of here. No, really, it's true. Really, that's peculiar. Amen. And it becomes the aroma of Christ into the nostrils of a world that is so sickened and stained with the stench of sin that we become the essence of Christ in a world that wants to just compromise with Christmas. Oh, let it never be so with us. Well, we also saw in John 20 the missional assignment. The missional assignment is that we are to be missional ambassadors Jesus said, and this is John making very clear the whole purpose of the gospel. At the end of John chapter 20, the previous chapter, Jesus says this, as the Father has sent me, now I send you. You see, the missional purpose is not that we gather like a social club. This is not a a car wash where we come in once a week and get cleaned up on the outside and go back out and get muddy again. It's not a country club where we come together and we share some resources so that we can enjoy a golf course together, or that we can come together and have superficial meals where we're kind of surface polite to each other. It's not even a place where we do uh, ministry together and it's just that, we're not a Salvation Army. We're not here for the purpose of becoming do-gooders, even if it's in the name of Christ. We're here to be one in Christ as his ambassadors, that our time together is to be filled with his truth and love and to share that with one another so that we help each other to grow vertically in him and horizontally together so that the weave of the fabric of this faith family is so tight that nothing can pull us away vertically from our king or from one another in our koinonia. Jesus has made it very clear throughout this gospel that this is the essence of what Christianity, and I say to you today, Christmas is about. We celebrate him, and we glorify him, and we live in his grace 